How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a very bizarre discovery that fundamentally changes everything we know about planetary formation. Because in this case, it's a very strange star system with a super unusual planet that currently makes no sense. Or at least makes no sense based on modern models and based on current theories. And so let's discuss the study you see right here on the carbon-rich atmosphere of a windy pulsar planet. The first such planet ever seen anywhere. PSR G2322-2650b. But in this case, in order to understand why this is so bizarre and why this planet doesn't make sense right now, let's actually discuss what type of a planet this is when it comes to star systems. Because here it's not orbiting a regular star. Its host is a pulsar. And so this is technically one of the rarest objects out there, a pulsar planet. And by themselves, pulsars are already extreme objects. Pulsars are of course neutron stars, which represent some of the most dense matter in the universe. Here we're talking about an object with the mass of a sun that's just a few kilometers across. And this is of course an ultra-dense core left over after a massive star explodes in a catastrophic supernova. But in this case, this neutron star is also a pulsar. Basically, it's spinning fast enough and has enough magnetic fields that it starts to emit radio emissions at extremely regular intervals. And so here it produces these very powerful beams of electromagnetic radiation from its magnetic poles. And because some of these beams sweep past our planet, it appears to pulsate and appears to flash every once in a while. So basically this is a type of a cosmic lighthouse. But here this particular pulsar is also a millisecond pulsar, meaning that it rotates extremely quickly, with pulses occurring in milliseconds instead of seconds. And so this is an extreme environment, and actually an environment we don't really expect to have planets, or at least an environment that usually destroys any object very close to it. As a matter of fact, these jets contain a lot of very harsh radiation, including X-rays and gamma rays, so they're technically bombarding this object at all times, making it slowly disappear over time. And we technically have seen something similar in other systems, with these objects usually referred to as black widows or sometimes spider pulsars. These are usually binary systems where the neutron star is very slowly causing one of the objects to evaporate until it eventually maybe disappears. This is the most famous such object known as the black widow. You can explore these objects in some of the previous videos in the description. But normally these types of objects produce additional emissions and actually produce a lot of other stuff and even appear cometary in shape from a distance. And it doesn't seem to be the case here, so it might have been a black widow long time ago and has now transitioned into something else. But it's really the planet in this case that seems to be super strange. So here, this Jupiter mass object seems to be one of the most extreme planetary objects we've ever seen. And while in many ways it resembles your typical hot Jupiter we usually see around many stars. Here it seems to match in terms of temperature, radius, and mass. But that's where the similarities seem to end. Because here by observing this object with the James Webb, researchers were able to see its atmosphere and even see what kind of temperature it has in different regions and specifically what it's made out of. And this is where this data became very surprising. First of all, this planet seems to have an impossibly tight orbit. A single year in this case is only about 7.8 hours. So it's about 1 million miles or about 1.5 million kilometers away from the star or from the pulsar. And because of this, it experiences ridiculous effects. For example, ridiculous gravitational effects. Here, this Jupiter mass planet is distorted so much that it starts to resemble a kind of a lemon. This is because of very powerful tidal effects from the pulsar. And on top of this, the intense radiation from the pulsar seems to create very strong atmospheric circulation and very strong wind. And even the atmosphere itself is kind of difficult to explain or technically impossible to explain. Instead of the usual atmospheric molecules we've seen before, such as water, methane, or carbon dioxide, scientists officially detected a lot of, a lot of carbon specifically carbon-2 and carbon-3. And this molecular carbon, or carbon where atoms are basically linked using atomic bonds, is usually seen around comets and maybe around nebula, but are never found in any stable forms on any planets out there. And that's because they're extremely reactive and normally combine with something else right away. And so here detecting this molecular carbon is super unusual. Out of approximately 150 planets that James Webb so far closely studied, none of them show detectable molecular carbon anywhere. 
And that, of course, kind of makes sense. Carbon atoms are usually very reactive and combine very quickly to form something entirely different. But the abundance of molecular carbon here tells us that this planet's atmosphere seems to be completely depleted in everything else. No oxygen, no nitrogen, and possibly even nothing else. Now, it could still have some oxygen and some nitrogen, but based on these observations, the ratio of carbon to oxygen is at least 100 times higher, and the ratio of carbon to nitrogen is at least 10,000 times higher. And right now, this is kind of difficult to explain. But the main reason it's so difficult to explain is because nobody has any idea how something like this could even form. This very exotic, pure carbon atmosphere rules out every known formation mechanism. For example, here, if this was a black widow system where the pulsar destroys the star, slowly removing its outer atmosphere until the star becomes a planet and eventually settles as a gas giant, cannot explain this composition either. And that's because here, the remaining planet mass object is supposed to be a stripped core of a companion star and should contain a lot of different elements we expect from stars. So it should not be just carbon, it should have at least oxygen and some nitrogen. As a matter of fact, based on modern theories, it's impossible to explain how nuclear physics would produce a stellar remnant that just contains carbon. So basically here it's unlikely to have been some kind of a star remnant. Likewise, if this formed like a regular planet, basically from some kind of a primordial disk, its composition would have been also very different. It would have contained at least some methane that should have been visible, and would probably contain something else we expect from various Jupiter-like objects. And so this extreme carbon enrichment poses a severe challenge in explaining exactly what we're looking at. I mean, for all we know, maybe this is not even a planet, but something entirely different that we've just never seen before. I mean, it definitely seems to be some kind of a remnant with a planetary mass, we just have no idea what this used to be. But we do have at least some additional information that can one day help us explain this. For example, here there's evidence of intense radiation heating the planet so much that it seems to create super powerful winds. Here the observations suggest very strong westward winds, which is actually normally pretty rare. But because this object is orbiting so fast around the star, a westward wind would actually make sense just because the orbital period is so short, only about 8 hours. And so because of these very extreme winds, and because of this extreme orbit, it possibly has some really bizarre circulation on the surface that scientists believe might involve some kind of a carbon-oxygen crystallization that then ends up sending pure carbon crystals into helium-enriched atmosphere on top that prevents additional reactions and basically maintains these perfectly preserved carbon molecules that no longer react with anything else. Or at least that's one of the explanations we have for now. Except that here it doesn't explain why we don't see nitrogen. And so yeah, this only explains half of the story. But in this case, the discovery of a planet around a pulsar is already super strange too. Because this discovery adds to a very small, strange gallery of pulsar planets that we know are extremely, extremely rare. Out of approximately 800 pulsars investigated, researchers from this different study concluded that fewer than 0.5% possibly have planets. So basically here we have just a handful of pulsar planets discovered to date. But the history of pulsar planets is actually very important, because the first exoplanets we've ever discovered were pulsar planets. And that's what this particular image depicts. In 1992, Polish astronomers completely by accident discovered three rocky worlds orbiting a millisecond pulsar, referred to as Lich. And while we know today that this was an incredibly, incredibly lucky discovery, because millisecond pulsars are actually rare, and having planets around them is even more rare. As a matter of fact, one of these planets is the smallest planet we've ever seen. It seems to have a mass of about 2% of planet Earth. Additionally, a completely separate star system known as the Methuselah star system contains a planet orbiting two stars. One of them is a millisecond pulsar, and one of them is a white dwarf. And here this planet is interesting because it might be one of the oldest planets we've ever seen, 12.7 billion years old. With its very existence also not making a lot of sense, it seems to be located inside a very dense cluster of stars, suggesting that it might have been captured into orbit rather than forming here from the beginning. And some other planets orbiting pulsars may also be super extreme. For instance, this planet, PSR G1719-1438b, seems to be an ultra-dense planet, possibly representing another star that was evaporated over time, and that possibly even formed some kind of a diamond planet. Or basically, a crystalline carbon planet that was just left behind. 
Now it's possible that this planet and what we just saw from the James Webb may somehow be related in terms of formation, but right now these are just speculations and we obviously have no evidence. Because the core paradox in this case is really in regards to their formation. No matter how they formed, it seems to require some kind of an extreme process and something that we definitely don't understand. And that's because whatever this planet is, it seems to have survived the initial supernova that produced the neutron star and then somehow transformed into what it is today, eventually reaching an extremely close orbit next to the pulsar. And so when it comes to explaining their origin, there are quite a few challenges. Which means that it's unlikely to have been some kind of a first generation planet that existed around the star system before the supernova and must have formed afterwards. Or possibly started as a star transforming into this bizarre object over time. But these studies do propose at least a couple of explanations. The more obvious explanation is of course capture. Maybe this was a rogue planet or a planet orbiting a different star that basically got captured by the pulsar's gravity. At least for some of these pulsar planets, this definitely makes sense. Second, maybe this was a companion star, but then, because of the supernova and the additional emissions from the pulsar, it somehow transformed a typical star object into an extremely bizarre and exotic remnant. Which possibly involved some kind of a phenomenon we still don't understand that essentially transforms the core of a typical star into some kind of a carbon enriched object that eventually might even become a massive diamond. Which is what may have happened in this case. But here just the sheer fact that all of these planets seem to be so different is already a mystery in itself. So basically here it looks like a lot of these pulsar planets seem to have had very different origins. And their existence seems to be both unusual and extremely unlikely. With this new discovery from 2025 taking things just a little bit further. This planet, which should have been relatively standard and should have resembled a typical hot Jupiter, instead features atmosphere that seems to be very very unique and extremely different from anything we've seen anywhere. Atmosphere dominated by molecular carbon and possibly helium that's currently just impossible to explain using any models. But this is why these discoveries are so important and push us to create new models and new explanations which will most likely lead to new phenomena and new explanations helping us understand the universe just a little bit better. And so it may not make sense right now it probably will with time. But until then, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic of pulsars in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying a wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.